Hi everyone, I'm Brittany, an educator from the DNA Learning Center, and today we're going to be talking about fingerprints, but more specifically, friction fingerprints. Now, what is a friction fingerprint? That is the marking on your finger due to the friction ridges on your fingertip. Now, where does this come from? Well, when you're developing in utero or in the womb, that's when your fingerprint develops, and it's unique to you. For this reason, along with others, fingerprints are used for identification. Fingerprints can be invisible. Fingerprints can be due to an impression in an object such as clay, or it can be a marking left behind after the print or the finger has been placed in something that will leave an actual visible marking. They're used as a signature to a contract. They're used to open our electronic devices, and they're used in crime scene investigation. Now, why is that? Well, we said it's already because they're unique, but they're also consistent throughout life in the sense that your fingerprint is not going to change as you get older. And then they've developed a classification system that will help identify a person based upon what they know about fingerprints. So let's talk about the three main categories or types of fingerprints you will see. And those patterns are that of an arch, a whirl, and a loop. Now let's look at the three characteristic shapes. Let's give it a whirl, fingerprint analysis. So in general, you will either see an arch, a loop, or a whirl. And the arch is the least common and the loop is the most common. But now we're going to take a look at fingerprints. And sometimes students get a little confused when they look at all the lines, but if you remember the general pattern of these fingerprints, it will help you get through. So now for an illustration, we do see the arch in the center of this print. We see the world turning upon itself, and then we see the simple loop. Now keep in mind there can be more complicated fingerprints such as a double loop or as you will see, a tented arch and a pocket loop. But this is when it helps to use the minutiae. So just one characteristic or one minutiae that we will mention that will help us when we're looking at our own fingerprints is that of the delta. So the arch looks like the characteristic arch, and you see this is a tent arch. The loop what helps me is that I like to think of it as it enters and exits in the same location. You see that little triangle area right there? A loop will typically have one delta. However, when it comes to a whirl, what we're looking at here, and we see it spinning upon itself, you'll notice there are two delta areas on either side that are lined up very closely. So that can help you if you are a little confused. And keep in mind, if you do have a mixed figure, it may be more difficult, but I believe in you. Are we ready to look at our own fingerprints? Let's begin. And now it's time for us to take our own fingerprints. Now, when you do this, you want to keep in mind that there is an actual technique behind doing it. But before we start, you want to make sure you have your washable ink pad. You want to make sure you have scrap paper. If you've never fingerprinted before, sometimes it takes a while to get used to how much ink you should have on your finger, so it's good to practice. And then you wanna have your sheet where you are going to record your fingerprints. You're always going to start with your right hand, which is shown on the top, and then you'll do the left hand. You also want a pen that you can use to write down the type of fingerprint that you have underneath each finger. So when you are fingerprinting, you're going to stick your finger directly into the ink. And then once you do that, you're not going to rub, you're actually going to press your finger down and roll. And you roll from nail to nail. So as an example, pretend this is ink, roll, nail to nail, nail to nail, nail to nail, nail to nail. And so you see, I'm actually going to practice with this hand. 
So I open my ink pad. I just press my finger into the ink pad. It helps when the paper is by the edge of the table and I put it down and I roll. And I can actually see my fingerprint pretty well. I'll do it one more time as an example. Um, very good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fingerprint on my sheet. So you start with your right thumb and then right index, right middle, right ring, and right little or pinky. One, two, three, and you see how when I press down, I'm not smudging. I'm just going from nail to nail, and now. And up. And I do see my fingerprints. So now I'm going to use my other hand. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. So you can see I have my fingerprints. Now, the next step is you're going to do all four fingerprints together because keep in mind, we've been rolling sideways, but there's still fingerprint at the top. You wanna to make sure you have the accurate picture of your full fingerprint. So now the way you do that is when you look at the bottom of your paper, you see at the left side, it says left or finger simultaneously. And on the right side, it says the same thing. So you just add the ink, all four together, and quickly in that box at the angle, you just go up and that's it. And uh, for this one, I roll slightly upward. I'm going to do it for the other side. Very good. And now the last part you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing, but with your thumbs, ink, ink, it shows left thumb, right thumb, just down and roll up. One. And two. Now at this point, what you can do and what I would suggest to do before you actually write down the different prints you think you see, go ahead and wash your hands. So that way it's easier to come up. Now that you've finished washing your hands, what you can go ahead and do is take some time and underneath each fingerprint, I want you to look at the pattern you see and write what it is under. If you're not quite sure, look at the center region of the fingerprint and draw a line along with the print to help you figure out the shape. Now keep in mind there are some mixed figures. However, I think you'll be able to see the majority of what you have. So what were your results? When I did it, I got mostly whirls and loops. Did you get the same thing or did you get something different? What about the people you live with? Are their prints similar or are they different? It's interesting to see the relationship between types of fingerprints within a given family. Well, I wanna thank you for joining me for this fingerprint analysis on today. Keep an eye out for further labs and we hope to see you again.